and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm thrilled you can join us today. We are going to learn about the Echo Box and how that can help you as a care partner and those you are caring for. But before I introduce our guest today, I always like to give a shout out to the Mark Arneson Band. I'm, I'm so thankful they let us use their song, Clarion Call, for our opening music. And for those of you that are new to our show, we're about sound information, not just sound bites. We like to have real conversations. So we talk for about an hour and really hear the story behind services, products, and tools. We find out the needs and the whys that are so critical in order to help us care better. So if you are interested in being a guest, please reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. I would love to talk with you and discuss that. Everyone around the world is open to being a guest. We want to hear from everyone at all levels. So that means if you're living with a diagnosis, if you're a family care partner, if you're a business professional, an author, a singer, a writer, a movie director, a researcher, an advocate, um, children in the families, everybody is welcome. So again, that's radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. I also want to give a shout out to Arbor Oak Senior Living and uh, Cedar Creek Senior Living and the YMCA out in Andover. We just did a screening of A Timeless Love on May 17th, and we're going to do another one on June 10th from 10 to noon, and that's in Minnesota. And if you are interested in attending that, all you have to do is call 763-230-9500. And we will be meeting at the Andover YMCA again. That'll be Saturday, June 10th uh, from 10 to noon. Um, Also want to uh, just recommend that you go to our main hub, alzheimerspeaks.com. There you'll find a ton of free resources. Please tap into them. That's why we have them. Download the tools or watch the videos, listen to the audios, um, print out the blogs. Uh, There's just so much there. And if you're living with dementia, you can also reach out to me to participate in either dementia chats or uh, dementia in the arch. And last on our site at alzheimerspeaks.com, check out Betty the Bald Chicken Lessons in How to Care. That is... um, available. That's a children's book. And um, I'm just so, so thrilled we finally got that out. You can also access Dementia Map, which is a wonderful, wonderful resource that has over 150 categories you can search, has a calendar of events, um, glossary of terms, and a blog as well. Okay, let me go ahead and introduce you to our guest today. We have the founders of the Echo Box, Tim Roberts, who is an artist and a musician with a love for travel. He loves great food and camping in the mountains with his kids. But in recent years, he switched gears and he went from owning and operating a local maintenance company to devoting his time fully to managing Echo Box, which began really as a small family project. His wife, Tannis, is his partner in Echo Box, and she enjoys the outdoors as well. She loves researching genealogy and spending time with family and friends. She's an avid reader and enjoys working at the neighborhood library and taking their dog Higgins on long walks. So um, Tannis and Tim, you know, work side by side on this project, and we're going to hear all about what started it and uh, where they're at with the project, how it's been received around the world, and how, most importantly, it can help you. 
So I am so excited to have the two of you with us today to talk about Echo Box. I think it's just a fabulous, fabulous tool. And um, before we get started, though, I always like to ask everybody if they have been personally touched by dementia in their own family or circle of friends. And Tim, I'm going to let you go first. Sure. Um, well, I guess I can say I have been, although uh, at the time, you know, I was a little bit younger um, and my grandfather was going through the early stages of dementia. Um, so I do remember, um, you know, a couple occasions where for me, I was a little confused as to what was going on or what he was talking about. Um, but it wasn't really, you know, front and center in front of me. Um, you know, it was just kind of like something that was was happening. I, it certainly wasn't something that uh, um, kind of forwarded us into this sort of uh, direction that we that we went. It was just that was probably as as much as my life has been touched by dementia. I think that's probably it. Yep. Okay. And like Tim, I also experienced it at a young age. More, I think, when I was around eleven, I remember visiting my grandfather, and he was in a home and. And he had confused me. He thought I was my mom. Um, and it was it was kind of scary, but really that that's my only early experience with it. Yeah, definitely both of us are kind of like outsiders looking in, definitely haven't rolled up our sleeves and been too involved in it whatsoever. Okay, sounds great. Um, Tannis, I'm gonna ask you to kind of tell us what was the inspiration be behind Echo Box. Everybody always likes to know the story behind the product or the service. So for us, it was a YouTube video that we saw about five years ago about a widower named Stan Beaton, who, whenever he was feeling lonesome, would listen to his wife's recording on their answering machine. And unfortunately, his service provider did a revamp of their system and the recording was lost. And so the video showed the moment where he got his wife's voice back and he was visibly moved and it was really touching. And then it kind of got us thinking about how there's a real lack of technology for seniors. Um, most technology is always driven towards younger people. And, you know, seniors typically aren't as comfortable with technology anyways. Um, That's right. They don't quite have the disposable income uh, that big business is, is looking for. And yeah, after we saw that video, we just thought what a shame it is that uh, all these stories and opportunities are simply being lost um, when technology it does so many amazing things for us. Uh, we just figured there had to be some sort of way it could it could uh, play a role here. Oh, exactly, exactly. And you know, I saw that video clip, and it is so powerful. The the joy, and I mean, I have family members all the time tell me, you know, they haven't erased the voice message and made their own since someone's passed. They they're still paying for the cell phone, you know, so that they can go back and listen you know, to those things. And, you know, it, those things are really, really incredibly important um, to our emotional stability in terms of process and grieving and, um, and being able to relive joyful moments. Uh, and I think it, it has been undervalued for a really long time of how critical that is in terms of, of keeping that legacy and that relationship for some people going, that's just really what they need to, to keep pursuing living on their own um, many times because they're at such a loss, you know, when a loved one passes. Absolutely. Yeah. Any sort of, of comfort that can be found in something as simple as your loved one's voice. I mean, it's a bit of a shame how, uh, you know, we can land on the moon over 50 years ago, but here's Stan holding on to a snippet of sound on an answering machine of his wife's voice. I mean, that's just, that's a crime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really, it really is. So Tim, when did you guys realize that you were kind of onto something here? Um, well, I think early on, we kind of thought we had, we knew what we had on our hands. Uh, we, we thought we were um, inventing a, a family-based digital legacy platform, um, which of course we thought, you know, was going to be meaningful for, for everybody out there. Everyone's got family and loved ones and wants to cherish their memories. Um, but I think when we, I don't know, when, when we first realized we had something special on our hands was probably when people started telling us what they saw in it, um, when it wasn't something that we had intended. Um, 
right off the bat, I think someone was uh, lucky. Luckily enough, we were talking to some uh, death doula groups early on. Um, they were talking about legacy work um, that got us into palliative care, uh, who was talking about, you know, um, legacy work and storytelling and uh, people wanting to, you know, put everything, you know, special about their lives in, in a certain place. Um, other people saw Echo Box as like a digital intake form, uh, like a, a much broader kind of version of, uh, you know, a, a submission form or a, a, what do they call it? Yeah, an intake form. Intake form. Yeah. Um, and so uh, through these discussions we had with caregivers, you know, people kept on making other suggestions like, oh, this would be amazing in, in dementia care and memory care and uh keeping, you know, people's co cognitive uh, function um, as, as healthy as for as long as we can. And other people would see it uh, as a, as a quality of life um, sort of platform where, you know, some people lose the ability to verbalize the things that they love about life. And uh, this could supply caregivers with a way to know what that person uh, loves and how to uh, care for them. And uh, all these sorts of different things that kept rolling our way kind of made us realize that, it wasn't we didn't really know what we had on our hands and that was what kind of made it special and um we kind of at some point realized that we had to kind of just cater this thing and steward it as much as we could and and not try to just wrap our arms around it and tell everyone that we knew what we had so uh, yeah I, I think it was basically realizing that it was much bigger and um broader than than we had originally thought yeah i think all of that feedback really drove us to a new direction and a, a new way to think about it. And instead of it being, you know, just something for everybody that we thought it was going to be, um, that we were going to, you know, steer it more towards the like Alzheimer dementia care groups. Yeah. We didn't realize it had such a possible valuable function besides outside of the grief support world. We thought it would be a family-based grief support didn't really see what others uh, eventually saw in it. And um, I guess that helped us to, to realize that we just had to go with the flow and pivot and see where it took us. Yeah, well, there's so many different groups, I think, that this can work for. And I think people will see that as we talk a little bit more. But, you know, when you were talking about when you got the feedback about the digital intake form, I think of how many companies are struggling with employees and literacy you know, and it's so much easier to listen because you can you can be doing something else while you're listening to and multitasking and still still learning versus having to stop and sit. And when you get interrupted, you know, you start all over again and things. So um, plus, I think when there's that voice to it, you get that inflection, the meanings different than just reading it, you know, kind of like the trouble we're having nowadays with everybody texting. It's like, well, what the heck does that mean? I could go five different ways, you know, right. <laughs> and, stuff. and if there's not an emoji with it, you don't have a clue which way they meant it to be and stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I love that, A, you created it, um, you know, by seeing something like that, just, you know, stepped into the space and then B, really listen to the feedback and to the needs and to see how big and broad that this can be and how many different ways it can serve, you know, I mean, there's so many different um, communities from, you know, dementia to just elders in general, people with chronic illnesses, um, people who are in that, that hospice path uh, to, um, to young kids and, you know, legacies of building a family and, and sharing stories through that process and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely endless. Um, if you're just tuning in to us right now, we are talking with Tim and Tannis Roberts, who are the founders of Echo Box, and we're just kind of getting the backstory. So if you're just starting now, you're probably going to want to go back and rewind it here because it's kind of interesting how somebody's life can change and how a passion can take over and just drive you to do something because you see a need. And I, I think that's really cool. You can also go to their website, echobox.ca, or you can email them at info at echobox.ca or call them at 403-992-3246. So Tannis, let's go back to you again, because, you know, as, as much fun as this is, you see, see a need, you know, you start kind of farting around and pulling stuff together and you're getting great feedback and seeing that it can balloon. I'm sure there were some setbacks 
that you guys were faced with. I mean, stuff just doesn't always go whoomp. No, <laughs> you know, it sure doesn't. Lots of waves and bumps in there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess to start out with, for we're not techie people. So mm -hmm. it was a, a whole new world that we were throwing ourselves into and having to, you know, meet with developers and try to find the right fit and then try to explain our, our vision of what we wanted um, along yeah. with. We're not we're not business people and we also don't have much to do with the healthcare world. So I mean <laughs> it, we were in the deep end kind of three times over. And um yeah, and that was just to start off. Yeah, and then so when we finally had our, our pilot project ready, well, COVID hit. And so everybody was way too busy to give us the time of day. And you know, we were phone cold calling people and nobody was really responding. So that was kind of tough. We weren't able to launch it properly yeah, the way right. we wanted to we had kind of you know we had these plans for a big launch party and who was going to speak and where we were going to get the pizza and wine from and all this stuff and of course you know that was just uh taken out from under us and then um as soon as we realized it was kind of like we were getting a response from the healthcare world uh you know everyone's of course super busy uh, with COVID and so it seemed to be like we we're almost kind of hassling people to, to get <laughs> yeah, some information yeah, and we had a couple, we were lucky to get a couple news stories through uh, the CTV news here locally, and then it went national, and then uh, BBC picked us up because Tim had approached them about um, possibly speaking with Stan Beaton, so he had a sweet little story on the BBC, which was exciting, um, and so then, you know, we saw a bit of a swell of interest again, and then... Um, yeah, some feedback yeah. started to roll in from kind of around the world and at first we thought it was a little bit distracting because again we thought we kind of knew what we had on our hands and um, all of this interest that started to come in from caregivers and um, early onset Alzheimer's groups and uh, it was a little bewildering to tell you the truth. And then right when we were getting ready to have more people on the platform unfortunately our developers kind of dropped the ball on us and were unable to continue with the project. We kind of kept kind of butting heads with them. They weren't that great at fixing some problems that uh, that were on the app. Yeah, and to be fair, they lost a couple of lead technicians, so it started to become a bit like the phone game, but super important to us. And uh, unfortunately, we had to part ways, and so um, that was unexpected as well. Um, and around and that same time, then my father got ill and uh, unfortunately passed away about four months later, and he was... <laughs> A big believer in the project and one of our first investors. So that yeah. uh, that was a bit of a blow. Um, um, but we just, you know, we keep moving forward with it. Yeah. <laughs> Tan's father, Bruce, uh, he kind of was the first one to see, uh, back when this was like just a fledgling idea, he kind of saw it for what it could be early on and said something like, um, oh, it's like a way to answer all of your grandchildren's questions that they didn't think of asking you. And um, that was just, it meant a lot to me because, uh, you know, he he got it right off the bat. Yeah. And um, so it was kind of, it was really hard because, you know, we're not in the world of technology or, or forwarding a small business or an innovation. And so right when all the storm clouds kind of gathered, that's when Tan's father passed away. And um, we're kind of, I think if there was ever a point where things were just going to come to a crashing halt, that was probably it. Yeah. Um, it didn't seem like there was much um, reason to go forward and it was just so much of a struggle um, even to the point where you know like uh, early on our friends and family were so supportive of us uh, and they still are to this day but as the time as the months and years have gone on of course uh, for all the right reasons they're kind of saying um, you know what did you kind of get yourself into here and uh, you know are, are you sure you kind of want to keep going and, and meanwhile um, that's just when the interest from the, you know, the caregiving world started to pipe up. And so it's just been so many kind of um, different battles all at the same time. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I guess at that point, too, once we realized that the development team wasn't working out for us, that's also when we realized that we st we had to pivot anyways and change direction yeah. and do a new iteration. So luckily, it was kind of a, a clean cut in that sense. Yeah, we didn't realize it at the time, but it was a blessing in disguise um, how even though we thought our first pilot model could kind of be everything to everyone, uh, eventually we had to admit it that uh, we had to go back to the drawing board. So 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a long list. <laughs> um, well, but that's, what, but that's what life delivers us. I mean, it, it's not a, a straight, easy road. You know, there are bumps. And I mean, you had, you had all the significant things of just technology and stuff. But then when you have that emotional loss on top of it, and a true believer in your product, I can see that really pop in the balloon and, and making it kind of spin for a while on that. Um, but I'm really glad that you guys stuck with it because it is a need. And even though you are not, you know, technology um, savvy and, and you're not in the healthcare, I think that's great because I think outside eyes are really good. They, they look at and they perceive things very differently and they ask questions of well, wh- why isn't it possible? You know, I mean, they they put the onus on those that know how to create this stuff and, and you can show them just the, the raw, authentic feelings that you guys have just through talking of why this is so important, you know, and it's not a, it's not for most people a, I don't even want to, this isn't the right word. I'm going to say maybe logical thought process because otherwise they would have done it before, but it's really a heart process. It's, it's really meeting the needs of the, of the heart and the soul to live life better. And to me, that's what your product really does is it goes right to the heart and it makes it really simple um, to, to comfort everybody who is now in that circle, you know, of Echo Box. And, uh, and I think sometimes the technicians, they don't always get why we're doing stuff or why the needs are. Um, and it can be, it can be little simple stuff from fighting over the colors you want or the style you want, or, you know, why you need it as easy, um, to use as possible, because it's not always about the big flashy next best thing that's rolled out in technology. That's going to work for your end user. And if you don't have the bil- ability to stand up and share that with somebody, you're going to, you're going to get product. That's not going to work for you then because you, you seem to really know your audience and, and what they need and your, your knowledge of that is expanding. And that's, you know, I mean, look how many more people, you know, you guys are going to be able to help because you slowed down and you listened. And a lot of times people don't do that. So kudos, kudos for you guys for doing that. And I guess thank you for everyone that gave us their time as well. I mean, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for caregivers. I mean, you know, the common denominator, it seems, between uh, caregivers is that they are naturally giving, they naturally care. Um, And because of that, um, we've been fortunate enough to get some really great uh, information from amazing, hardworking people. Yeah, I think everybody in the industry and families involved and, and those living with diagnosis, they just want life easier. I mean, that's as simple as it really gets. And if they can, you know, help with feedback to, to make the burden less for the next guy and hopefully for themselves as well, you know, that's a good thing, you know? Um, so I think, I think it's great, you know, how creative you guys got and, and were willing to take the risk. You know, a lot of people would go, yeah, that's a really sad story. And then, you know, it would be all forgotten about and they wouldn't step up and step in the way you guys did. So, um, Tim, I want to ask you about, you know, we were talking about the adjustments and the difficulty in, in changing direction and really looking at yourselves now as being a healthcare solution. Um, what types of things were involved for just the two of you to even process that shift? Yeah, um, it was a huge ball of wax because, again, it came at such a time where we kind of had to decide um, whether to kind of just let all the chips fall or to kind of gather it up and and run in another direction. Um, It was hard to admit to ourselves that the pilot wasn't going to be able to do everything because we put so much into it. Um, But, you know, again, we had some really good advice from different people and they just said, you got to got to let it go. You got to let it move. Um, and so, yeah, we kind of, at some point we called it Herbie the love bug because it seemed like it was making all the decisions for us. And we just had to kind of grab hold and follow along as best we could. Um, uh, so yeah, we had to completely redesign, you know, the structure of the app, um, break it down to right to the, we had some core alterations we had to make um, some functionality that wasn't going to work um, in a, in a corporate sort of environment. 
Um, there were privacy concerns between patients and doctors that we didn't have to worry about in our initial design. Um, we were switching from a business to consumer to a business to business company. Uh, <laughs> you know, there was so much. I think we just realized we had to, uh, instead of kind of being close to the top of the mountain, we were right back in the weeds and we had to um, just admit to ourselves that there was a lot of work that we had to do and a lot of research that was necessary for it. So, I mean, we talked to hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of caregivers, I mean, through Zoom uh, meetings and emails and cold calls and FaceTimes. Um, mm -hmm. We met with, you know, rec therapists and doctors and psychologists and activities directors. Um, we had to we researched the difference between healthcare uh, mm -hmm. situations and settings, um, what the average long-term care facility had as far as the number of beds, uh, the kinds of technologies they had, the devices that they had, how much time your, your average uh, rec therapist can spend with an individual, you know, how many beds there are in a facility, uh, what's the turnover rate. But yeah, I guess all in all, there was just, um, there was just a lot of work and we thought we were kind of close to, um, you know, another, a different sort of room uh, instead of going back to the drawing board. I thought uh, um, both of us were kind of getting to the point where we could kind of get it uh, into people's hands and really start to flourish. But instead it was, um, you know, let's just call a spade a spade and, and do this the right way. And so uh, it took about two and a half years uh, to really um, to, to call it on the first model and to get behind the second one and to feel confident that we've um, really scratched out all of these experiences and uh, information and stories and and day to day, um, you know, hands on experiences, I guess, from from these caregivers to, to really feel confident in what we have and what we're going to be able to provide people now with. And, um, I, you know, I'm glad we did. Yeah, well, we learned a lot. It's it's been incredible. You know, I feel like we've gained kind of like a whole new skill set. Just oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the terminologies alone. Uh, I mean, you know, people will tell us things like, "Oh, that's a great non pharmaceutical solution," and we'll say, "Yes, it is." Right? <laughs> um, or someone else might say, uh, "Oh, this is an amazing way to capture the oral histories uh, and traditions of uh, you know our, our First Nations or or you know Indigenous cultures." And uh, and again, we were just thinking, "Oh, yeah, right, um, sure." And and again, it's just we just have to kind of keep our minds open and design this in a way um, that it's going to honor people. It's not going to step on any toes. We're not going to annoy people with advertising or third party garbage. Um, you know, we just want to make it a healthy thing and not a harmful thing. And uh, I think, unfortunately, I think there's a lot of room in that area between social media platforms where something with good intentions would probably stand out. And I think that's where we're trying to set up camp. Yeah. And that's really a fun place to be, you know, because it, it does stand out. It is different. And, you know, you were talking about trying to figure out the technologies that, that people are using. And I mean, those, those are like a hot potato. They're changing all the time. So what people are using today, I mean, you can get all the way through to almost launch and then something new comes out, you know, another version of something and, and everybody's going back to the table again or trying to figure out from hospitals to residential communities to home health care to doulas to, I mean, there's, there's so many different levels to adult day could use this, um, families can use this. I mean, it, it's endless. And so, you know, just being, I think, I think one of the things sometimes we we get is too controlling over what it's going to be instead mm -hmm. of allowing people to to use it how it works for them, you know, and and knowing some of those options um and and being to say, yeah, that's that's cool. Go ahead, use that. Let us know how that's going for you. <laughs> you know, keep <laughs> us, keep us posted on that. Um is I think a really nice direction to be able to to go with that. So um I also wanted to know in the future, like, do you guys have a, a time frame for, you know, your second version to, to be launched? Um, and, I, and I know, I mean, just doing a website, they give you one date and it's six months to, you know, nine months later, a lot of times. So we won't hold you to anything, you know, unless you're really, really firm on that, but just kind of curious on where you're at in the process right now. 
Well, we just so happen to be awaiting um, to hear back from a couple of grant offices. Um, we, because we, to be just completely honest, uh, you know, we've basically flipped the bill up until now. We could have been smarter with trying to pursue grants uh, and and you know available funding, uh, but we just thought let's just hit the ground running. And so, um, to answer your question, I think we should be hearing back within a week or two, and that's going to give us a direction one way or another, and we're going to go forward with it. And once we start moving, um, we have been told to expect between four to five months of development, and then um, maybe four to six weeks of testing. And so uh, optimistically, we might be looking half at a half a year, you know, so, um, you know, October-ish, November-ish, but um, it's an evolution. Um, we have it completely designed. It's just uh, how many gremlins we might run into as we develop it. Yeah, and they're out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. They are out there, you know, and they will. They will test you and and stuff, um, which is which is fine. I mean, that's part of the process. That's part of the game, you know, of life. You know, is is diverting and adjusting around those things. So, yeah. Um, anything else in the future that you want to share with us regarding Echo Box or? Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've always had kind of like these big goals and, uh, you know, a vision for what it could be. Um, of course, we can't really let that distract us from just like the things that are right on our plate and, and uh, in front of us at the moment. But um, just, you know, through I, one thing that we were hoping to, to uh, add to our website, and I guess we, in a sense, we've already started is, uh, you know, in the future, we thought that it would be great if we could kind of become um, a resource for health re- healthcare related products and services. Uh, we've already got like an internal network that we call a round table. I didn't know what else to name it. I called it the round table. Um, but it's just kind of um, healthcare professionals that we've had a Zoom meeting or a phone call with that we really clicked with that we knew that they kind of got it. And um of course, there's a lot of uh, information sharing and products and services, just amazing products and services that are out there um, that I feel that, you know, should be just, you know, known about and a little bit more of like household names. Um, and so we're starting to gather logos and uh, links. And so at some point, aside from being, you know, a, a healthcare solution, we were hoping that a portion of our website could act as uh, you know, a resource hub for um, uh, any matter of of different healthcare concerns. So, um, and then in, in a sense, I guess that would be kind of like our way of giving back because um, we haven't had to pay anybody anything to meet up with them and to forward um, what could be a life changer for us. Um, well, it kind of already is, but I mean, we have we, are, we have big dreams and we're not going to give up on them. And uh, people have helped people have helped us uh, to get where we are. And um, yeah, hey, if we can put their product and their uh, service on our website, just as a thank you, then there's, there's one thing that we can certainly do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's nice to lift one another up in that fashion that showing the collaboration. I I know when I was dealing with my mom, you know, with dementia for 30 years, my dad with brain cancer for, for four and a half, I always appreciated when I knew certain companies or people knew one another, it just, it made me feel like I had a team behind me it it made it made things uh it made me feel more trusting in terms of tapping into different things and I think that's a huge huge problem that we have for so many people out there is you don't know and all we hear is the horror stories of somebody getting hacked or abused or whatever on the news and stuff and and so if doing that might seem little but it's huge on a lot a lot of levels I think absolutely Yeah. yeah Yeah, and I think in the near, in the future future, um, provided, you know, this iteration goes well, we'd like to also kind of redig back at the, the our pilot project and uh, do more of the, of the family-based one where you can actually, you know, um, ask somebody to view your room, mm-hmm. um, befriending friend, people and, and having them be able to see what you've got. Because right now, of course, like Tim mentioned earlier with the, the privacy issues, that's not currently available. So yeah, and luckily we were able to design the corporate model so that it can still assist in a one-on-one caregiving situation at home between you know a mother and a and their parent or an aging parent or whoever it might be. Um, but yeah, unfortunately we kind of realized that the um, you know 
we, we were, it kind of broke our heart to kind of take it away from that uh, family based sort of um, social sort of multi generational um, connection for a family uh, and put it into at the time what I thought was just a very cold and calculated sort of <laughs> a corporate setting, which I don't know, you know, I just thought, well, that's there's there goes the idea. But um, luckily, it, it, it retained all of its heart and soul. And um, we just need to kind of hopefully get through um you know the the enterprise level the corporate level and then um hopefully get back to where we can kind of uh get to a family-based sort of platform as well yeah and that that HIPAA and privacy stuff that's critical you know critical mm-hmm. importance and and um I mean even families are tightening up on what they share on social media or who it goes to within a family they're realizing there's some differences and how how materials can be used and things like that so um, yeah, it's just the world we live in today. Things have really, really changed with that. So sure. anything else, uh, Tannis, that you wanted to add? Um, I guess in the future, 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 we're thinking <laughs> that it would be really great. It would be cool if it could eventually be kind of an AI thing where you would go um, like do a VR thing and go into the room of the of the person and kind of be able to see their memories and have them take you with them and tell tell you their story um i i don't know it's just kind yeah, of it's it, kind of a wild idea it's, it's a long ways away but yeah it's it's a i don't know a little cringe where the ai i mean everyone you feel one way or the other about it but um you know we've put enough thought into this that we thought boy wouldn't it be neat to kind of host your own echo box even if it was after you've passed away so that if a loved one came in to check out um you know your favorite recipes or songs or movies or what have you you could welcome them and say you know uh hey how's it going you know i see you want to check out my movies well let's go have a look and then open up the movie file a little far-fetched for now but yes. the things you see out there i mean are just amazing um of course we've got to pay attention to what's uh you know under our noses right now but um i think if we keep an open mind uh you know this could go anywhere so well, and it might be things, you know, that you, that people start capturing, just having a person saying that, you know, and catching it on a video or an audio or whatever it might be, in case that happens in their lifetime, you know, because I, I can see that being fun. I mean, we have all these virtual communities that are out there. Um, so it sounds like it would be and should be adaptable, you know, to be able to do that. Well, I, like I said, I, I was really excited to meet the two of you, hear your story, your your um, perseverance, you know, through this whole thing, too, is just really something, you know, you just keep pushing through, you you kind of bit your teeth into it and aren't letting it go, even, <laughs> even though something, something else looks like it might be more entertaining or more relaxing, you know, less stressful for you, you, you still got a hold of it and are moving forward with it and you know maybe that's your dad pushing you forward going honey you got a good idea don't let it go you know just keep 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 moving forward so in in wrapping up you know I hope our audience found this to be an interesting conversation I know I surely did and maybe it'll inspire other people out there to to move forward on something that they've seen or heard or experienced themselves uh, that needs needs to be changed Um, any one of us has the power to make a difference. You know, we just have to be brave enough to step out of our comfort zone. Like you guys, you know, we're, we don't know anything about technology. We don't really know anyone about with dementia. We're not healthcare, you know, gurus. We're not big business people, but look at what you're doing. You know, you're learning because you're excited because you know, there's a need. So there's that, that automatic willingness to learn and build new skills, you know, like you said. So, I I hope again that our audience will be givers of hope and like and click and share this journey with others, you know, share the share the story. Alzheimer's Speaks has never been about, you know, ego driven and it's about us. It's really always been about sharing other people's stories, connecting people to services, products and tools and possibilities, you know, of what our world can be like and you know, it takes no time, it costs no money, you know, to do those likes, clicks and shares. Again, you can reach out to them at their website, echobox.ca, or uh, email them at info at echobox.ca, or call them at 
3246. They're also on Instagram as echobox.memory.vault.ltd. And they are on Facebook, so you can connect with them there at Echo Box uh, Memory Vault. And also, uh, you can get a hold of Tim uh, via his name, Tim Roberts, on LinkedIn. So no reason not to reach out, guys. Um, maybe you have some ideas for them and thoughts on this as well. Um, appreciate so much your time today, your energy on all you've done you know, to improve our, our care culture. I think it's beautiful. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for having us on. Yes, thank you, Lori. And thanks. And hello to all your uh, listeners and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for having us on. It's been an honor for us. So. Privilege for me as well. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Hey, everybody. Jared Sebesta here, host of Retire Repurposed. Now, this podcast is about the non-financial parts of retirement, which many times can be even more challenging than the financial. We believe retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful, purposeful, and fulfilling season of a person's life. So don't retire. Become repurposed. To listen now, search Retire Repurposed on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.